Oh, overclocking, the common excuse for so many tech enthusiasts to spend just a lot more on their rig. This time, however, I'll be talking about overclocking something specific, a GTX 1080. Spoiler alert! A loot? Spoiler alert! It overclocks quite well, but there's a wild card here. NVIDIA introduced GPU Boost 3.0, and it's a whole new beast. Cooler Master's Mastercase Maker 5 features the freeform modular system for nearly unlimited customization. Learn more in the link in the video description. To explain GPU Boost 3, we need to give some information about GPU Boost 2. Your graphics card would dynamically change its frequency across a linear frequency offset curve. This is the curve that you would increase across the board, due to it being linear, whenever you applied an overclock of say 50 or 100 or wherever it was on that little slider that you had before. And then based on the load that's on your card, your frequency would fluctuate along that curve. This is generally quite a good system, but it sometimes falls short because it doesn't crank your clock speeds up to its potential maximum for every single possible voltage level. And these voltage levels will dynamically change based on things like temperature, power, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So odds are you're losing performance somewhere. So GPU Boost 3, alongside other more general improvements over GPU Boost 2, allows us to either overclock the old way with linear offset curves, or break away from that linear offset curve and tune things per voltage point. What? Okay, so that's kind of rather confusing, sorry about that. Let's actually do some stuff and hopefully it will make more sense. The feature that helps you do these things is called OC Scanner within the EVGA Precision app, which is the only one that supports it so far, although I'm sure it will become ubiquitous soon. Within the scanner, there are three different modes. Basic mode applies a set frequency offset to all voltage points. Linear mode allows users to linearly increase the clock offset after choosing a start and end point. And then it gets interesting with manual mode, which First off, it's fairly self-explanatory, you manually input values for frequency at each voltage step. But it also enables the run button, which is where the fun begins. This will run an automatic test that will determine and apply what it thinks is an optimal overclock. But before clicking run, click the little cogwheel down below, which is enabled in the OC scanner mode, and play with the settings a bit. They start a little too high in my opinion, although this may change by the time people get their hands on it. I set my test period to 5 seconds, my starting kilohertz offset to 200,000, my end to 250,000, and my step to 10,000. Then I went back to the main screen and increased my power target and temperature target to 120% and 92 degrees. Then it's time to click run. What happens now is a Furmark window will open and a fuzzy EVGA logo will show up, resulting in what Colton called MS Paint with Radar. What a noob. Anyways, this will stress out the graphics card and check at a specific amount of voltage how much frequency the card can pump out by increasing said frequency over the start amount by the step count that we set earlier in that cogwheel and retesting over and over and over again, hopefully recovering from crashes mostly on its own. Now there are more features coming, like aggression percentage and stuff like that, so you can have more conservative but stable overclocks. But the performance increase over non-overclocked is already pretty good, considering this was an entirely automated process. After that, I set everything back to default and applied a manual overclock of my own, increasing the core clock by 200 megahertz and the memory clock by 500 megahertz. This isn't the most aggressive overclock I could have done, but it was pretty rock solid and I'm comfortable running both my 1080s at this speed. So if you do it on your own, it should probably be fine. Now my overclock beat the new OC scanner automated overclock, but as automation isn't really the point, I went back to the OC scanner, found the result that it gave me, and played around a bit by increasing a few of the different frequency steps along the way, mainly the ones near the top end. This actually helped me defeat my manual overclock, albeit by a fairly minor amount, quickly and very easily. Now that was actually pretty cool, but at the same time, the limit that the OC scanner kept on hitting so that it would stop was usually a power limit. So while I'm happy with the result we got, now I'm even more excited for the results that we may get from future cards, like aftermarket solutions with more power availability. I'm shooting this video before I leave for Computex, and I'm pretty sure it's coming out 
after I come back. So by the time you see this, you will actually be more informed than I currently am about what cards will be available with potentially higher power solutions. So here's hoping that that actually does happen. <laughs> Does it give you the creeps when your internet provider tracks your web browsing? Today's lack of online privacy brings out your inner grizzly bear, then you should try TunnelBear. TunnelBear is a simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. With TunnelBear turned on, your Wi-Fi connection is secured and your online activity is kept private from your internet provider. And people like advertisers that are trying to look up and track people so that they can target advertisements on you and sell that information to other people, which you don't necessarily want, and then profit from that data sale. TunnelBear has a top-rated privacy policy and does not log your activity. Try for free with 500 megabytes and no credit card required. And if you choose to get unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com LTT. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike the video and you're like, I don't want to performance tune my graphics card, you're dumb. You can do that. You can also subscribe if you want to see more of our coverage on aftermarket 1080 cards and everything else, to be completely honest. Go to Amazon, use our affiliate code that helps us a ton. It's actually kind of a big deal and stuff. You can buy our t-shirts at the link in the video description down below. Go on the forum and talk about graphics cards in a constructive and non-aggro way. And check out this video up here, which was the release video for our 1080. That will give you more information about just like kind of the reference card and how it performs when it's not overclocked.